Okay, let's get this out of the way first. I am aware this video is about a TOS era phaser and I am wearing a post-season 3 DS9 TNG era shirt. I know this. I just prefer the dicky uniform to the tunic uniform and I think this is a cool hoodie. The combination is anachronistic. I recognize it. Moving on. I am Will Greenwald and you are watching Loot Drop on Geek.com. This isn't just a TOS era phaser. This is ThinkGeek Star Trek phaser remote control. It's a cosplay prop. It's a collectible. It's a universal remote and it's really good at being two of those things. According to ThinkGeek, this was made from molds of an original phaser prop from Star Trek, and it looks and feels great. It comes in two parts, the Type 1 phaser module, and the Type 2 phaser pistol you can snap the module into, and it's full of great details. The Type 1 module has a setting wheel that doesn't spin, but serves as the uh, mode button, and can switch between modes with it, and the uh, little reticle goes up and down when you turn the wheel. The Type 2 pistol has a settings knob that changes the sound the phaser makes, and has a little screw-out door that shows the phaser's focusing crystal. The crystal and the emitter both light up in different colors. It's mostly plastic, but the handle is a nice heavy metal that makes the whole thing feel good in the hand, and there are other metal bits like the uh, emitter shielding. It's a really good cosplay prop thanks to the detail and the build quality and the effects mode. This makes the phaser act like a phaser. It lights up and makes different phaser noises when you pull the trigger or press the little button on the underside of the Type 1 module. If you turn the setting to 9, you can even put the phaser into overload, and it will slowly build up and then make an explosion sound effect. That explosion is not very loud, and that takes like 30 seconds. It does other Enterprise sound effects when you hold the trigger down in mode zero and make different gestures. Speaking of segues, the phaser is not a great remote control. Those gestures that make the Enterprise sound effects are the same gestures you use to send remote control sounds in control mode. Flick left, right, up or down, twist left or right, or jab forward and backward. Any gesture can be programmed with a remote command, but this means the phaser is only really good at like power, input, and other one-off commands. If you want to look through the program guide or change the volume or do anything remotely complicated, use your actual remote. This is a really limited and awkward feeling remote, and you can consider the whole feature as more of a bonus than the main reason to get the phaser. This is an expensive cosplay prop, not a niche universal remote. That's just a nice little extra. Speaking of cool extra features and segues, there is one neat thing about this as a remote. By pulling the trigger twice and holding it, it stuns any TV and sends out a broad near-universal signal that can knock out most HDTVs without programming the phaser with its individual codes. Incidentally, this is my Diamond Comics Star Trek phaser. The batteries are completely dead, but I bought it from the Star Trek Experience gift shop in Las Vegas, which isn't there anymore and I'm still bitter about it. And you can see the difference in build quality, even though the molds look almost identical. Plastic, it feels lighter, it's cheaper, and its effects aren't nearly as good. Even if the batteries in it were working. It uses little watch batteries that are really hard to find. But, you know, you can get this for like 30, 40 bucks online. The phaser remote is available for 150 from ThinkGeek, and it's a pretty excellent prop and collectible. It comes with the Type 1 module, Type 2 module, Starfleet carrying case, a screwdriver for connecting and removing the grip because the screw's on, and a great magnetic base that holds it up without, you know, needing to do anything, so you can display it on a shelf. For more geek toys, collectibles, and things you can buy, keep watching Loot Drop on geek.com.